really, I mean, the recognition it's, it's brought to Indian writing and, and the visibility it's brought to Indian writing. Uh, both writing originally in English as well as uh, writing in translation, uh, it, it's made a tangible difference. It wasn't just the winner that got the attention. Uh, apart from the long list, there was like this long period of attention on the shortlisted writers, on their books, there were events set up to try and rustle up interest around the book. Across India or Pan-India, uh, publishers and writers in fact look forward to the whole process of the award actually from the long long list to the short listing and uh, people are keeping the publishers are keeping their fingers crossed actually. I have uh, read reviewers saying that they picked up my novel after they learned about it being shortlisted for the JSB prize. I've been introduced to writers and translators I may have never come across. Therefore, it has added a kind of richness to my language, to my thought. Uh, one of the things that I particularly like about the prize is that we have short lists and long lists not only from books originally published in English but also uh, translated works. Recently, uh, I came come across with a news that eminent writer Ruskin Bond, he has recommended Andy Clock as one of the 10 must-read books. And I think all these things, uh, as a result of a JCB prize shortlist tag, it, all these things have happened. To win the JCB award, uh, it's not easy because there are so many writers writing in so many languages. Uh, they are, uh, and even those who write in English, uh, so there's a competition. It's true, we should admit it as a competition. And in my case, you know, I never expected that I would get it. JCB ka shortlist mein aana koi bhi writer ke liye bahut bada bhari baat hota hai. Hamare ek pustak pahle ek bar gaya shortlist mein, ye do bara. Ab puraskar to ek hi ko milega, sabko to nahi mil sakta. Paanch pustak jo shortlist mein gaya, wo paanchon mein chhamta hai, koi bhi puraskar jeet sakta hai. Lekin mere wahan tak pahunchna ye mere liye bahut bada bhari baat hai. I'd like to thank the JCB for shortlisting my debut, no debut novel and I'd like to wish the very best of luck to all the shortlisted authors. This was the only award I, I was there present at the, at the moment and uh, still I feel the moment the award was declared and uh, it, it was won by me. Before I was uh, uh, known as a regional writer, as a Malayal writer, but after the JCB Prize, I become a become an Indian writer. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Sunil Khurana, Chief Operating Officer, JCB India, uh, accomplished jury for 2022. Authors, translators, and publishers, members of our advisory council for the JCB Prize, and each one of you who has joined us this evening, in person and virtually, it gives me great joy to welcome all of you to the award ceremony for the JCB Prize for Literature 2022. The JCB Prize for Literature is the brainchild of Lord Bamford, Chairman JCB. It was his vision that set us on this glorious path of discovering the wealth of storytelling traditions, old and new, from across India. The JCB Prize is a celebration of the diversity of our literature that is not bound by one language, but is read in many and spoken in several more. With that in mind, the JCB Prize has aimed at creating a level playing field for fiction written in English and translated from Indian languages. The jury encountered powerful books that were transformative, empowering, and validating reading experiences for our readers. As in previous years, the books selected stand testimony to the literary talent of our country. The translated works stand out for their intimate accounts of life in various parts of India. Our books, in effect, have helped us travel nationwide, opening us up to the reality of countless cultural conundrums. 
literature and translation by breaking the language barrier have helped create a connection with people whom otherwise we couldn't meet or talk to or have conversations with. This year marks the fifth edition of the JCB Prize for Literature. And these five years have sailed by under the guidance and constant support of our advisory council. Mr. Tarun Das as head of our council, Ms. Feroza Godridge, Ms. Saida Imam, Dr. Harish Trivedi, Mr. Vivek Shanbagh, and Ms. Arundhati Subramaniam. Thank you so much for always being there for us. We are also grateful to JCB India for their unwavering support to make this prize what it is today. Mr. Deepak Shetty, MD and CEO of JCB India, has been unable to join us, but has sent a message for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the jury, authors, translators, friends from the media, and the viewers who have joined us today, good evening. It is a pleasure to be a part of this awards evening for the fifth edition of JCB Prize for Literature. I would have certainly liked to be with you in person. However, due to a bereavement in my family, I'm unfortunately not able to join you physically. However, this award is very close to me and I did not want to miss the occasion and thus thought it was best to be with you virtually and more importantly in spirit. For over four decades, JCB has captured the heart and minds of countless people across the country. We have all seen how JCB has remained committed to building the much needed infrastructure in India. But more than machines, Lord Bamford's vision of wanting to give something back to India through this literature award reflects the values and ethos that we all stand for. In a way, this award captures the pulse of India, a nation that is diverse in so many ways in our language and literature, among others. And it is only fitting that the award celebrates Indian writing regardless of the language. Thus, it is hugely encouraging to see that all five shortlisted novels this year are translations. Through Lady Bamford's CSR initiatives in India, we are heavily engaged with the communities. Today, we have three in-house foundations. We work on nine sustainable development goals and reach out to women, adolescents, girls, artisans, and youth. JCB has also pioneered another project to rejuvenate indigo art called Neela House, a center of excellence for craft in Jaipur. Lady Bamford, on your recent visit to India, it was an inspiration to see and experience how deeply you care towards working with the communities. And this award is also an extension of the same belief. Lord Bamford, thank you once again for this wonderful initiative. Your vision and decision of coming to India at a time when it was not fashionable to invest here has indeed made a significant difference to so many lives. I thank the members of the jury for their time and efforts and the literary director, Meeta Kapoor and her team for putting this event together. And to all our well-wishers, colleagues and friends who have joined the event in New Delhi, thank you. Thank you for your encouragement and support. I hope you all have a great evening ahead and I look forward to interacting with you soon. We are a land where coexistence of cultures, languages, and creative expression are a reality. Therein lies a celebration both in thought and deed, resulting in the niche, rich narrative of expression which forms the core of our lives that we celebrate today and every day. This beauty, like in our literature, translates itself into all art forms, visual, performative, and experiential. We present to you Marg, choreographed and conceived by Sriram Kala Kendra. You will see five Indian classical dance forms, starting with Pratham Pujite Ganesham, a Bharatnatyam performance by Suhail Bhan, followed by Pallavi by Sudha Mukhopadhyay, a piece choreographed in Odissi, melding to Darbare Salami by Anukriti Vishwakarma, a Kathak performance composed by Pandit Birju Maharaj. 
followed by Cholaketu by Vishnu Priya Morar, a Mohini Attam art act performed to music composition by Valaryar Jarajindran and Kalamandala Lilama. And then a piece on Mayur Bhanj Chhau by Swapan Majumdar. The concluding ensemble is an amalgamation of all the five forms, once again exploring the essence of a vibrant culture through dancing in madness composed by Anushka Shankar. Swarami Maha Ganapati Manasa Swarami Maha Ganapati Manasa Swarami
कला केंद्र
Thank you, Sri Ram Bharatiya Kala Kendra, for leaving us spellbound with your performance this evening. I'd also like to thank Devashish Karmakar for the light design, Minakshi Das for background visuals, music mixing, lighting, and coordination. I would like to now welcome on stage our jury members for 2022. Mr. A.S. Paneer Selvan, the chair for this year's jury. Mr. Amitabh Bhakti, <laughs> Dr. Devika, Ms. Janice Pariyat, Ms. Rakhi Balaram couldn't join us today, but she's watching online. Thank you for all that you have done. Your spirited discussions have been a weekly highlight and a reassurance for why we do what we do. I have been solitary witness to the jury's formidable energy levels and the commitment with which they read and reread every book that, is, that was entered, sharing notes, cross-references, passionately debating and moving forward to reach where we are today. Can we have a huge round of applause for our jury? I'm now going to request Mr. A.S. Paneer Selvan to please address the audience. Thank you, Meeta. Thank you for all of you. Literature sometimes is a window and sometimes it's a mirror. Therefore, we don't know at which point it becomes a window or at what point it becomes a, a mirror because uh, you look at it and you also reflect. For us, the biggest experience was the additive process. When we started, we were looking at different languages. Then it was an enriching experience. Then it became a slightly difficult one because we have to get into the subtractive process of shortlisting the novels. The pressure of the additive process and the pain of actually the subtractive process is the one which makes us an exciting uh, journey. What we discovered is that all of us also get into literary silos. This process helps us to break that literary silos in a conscious manner because we get into a comfort zone of some writers, some genres of writing, some publishing houses, and they also produce so much of materials, therefore it keeps us busy. But a price like this, and if you are being part of the jury, it helps you to break that silos consciously. And some books actually opens your mind to the different types of narratives which are available. And these new narratives actually challenge our idea of what constitutes modern literature. What constitutes modern literature is it's polyphony, and that polyphony gets its due recognition because we recognize the importance of translation, and there is no hierarchy among languages. We look at the importance of narratives and the importance of literature and its intrinsic value of helping people retain hope. For us, the idea is finally the idea of hope and JCB reinforces our faith in humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Paneer Selvan. The shortlisted books for 2022 have the ability to transport us into a moment, a place, a time. You can walk the streets of Kalimpong while dipping into the memories of childhood friends, rediscover Calcutta through the uninitiated eyes of Iman, inhale the scents of kitchens from eastern Uttar Pradesh, visualize the serenity of Vayanad, and revel in the playful yet pensive life of Ma reaching the age of 80. Today is the culmination of this journey. 
And for that, I request our shortlisted writers and translators to please join us on stage. I think we can do better with the applause. Thank you. For our writers and translators who have joined us here in their physical presence, we have Manuranjan Vyapari and Arunava Sinha from Iman, published by ACA. Shuran Kabimo for the Song of the Soil, published by Rachna Books. Khaled Javed and Bara Faruqi for Paradise of Food, published by Juggernaut. Gitanjali Shri for Tomb of Sand, published by Penguin Random House India. And Sheila Tomi for Wali, published by HarperCollins Publishers India. Gitanjali Shri and our translators Daisy Rockwell, Jayashree Kalatil and Ajit Paral couldn't join us in person. We've missed your presence greatly, but we know you're with us in spirit. I'm going to request our writers and translators to please sign a copy of your books. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Lord Bamford will announce the winner for the JCB Prize for Literature 2022. Good evening, good evening, namaste. How wonderful it is to join you all again, virtually for this evening's award ceremony. Thank you all for taking the time to be in Delhi tonight for this unique celebration of Indian literature. Once again, my thanks go to Meeta Kapoor, Literary Director of the JCP Prize, for all of her hard work, not just this year, but over the last three years, which, as we all know, have not been easy for anyone. Thank you, Meeta. Everything you do in support of the JCB Prize is truly appreciated. I'm very pleased to report that my wife Carol and I did manage to get back to India this year. You have no idea how much we missed your wonderful country during the COVID travel restrictions. The colours of India look more vibrant than ever, and it was a real joy to be back among you all. As I've said many times before, India has given us both so much. And because India has given us so much over the years, I wanted to give something back to India. That's how the JCB Prize for Literature came to be. I'm really delighted by how well regarded the prize is in India today, after just a few years. And thank you all so much for your support of the prize. Let's get straight to the main event of the evening, shall we? 
I'm delighted to have been asked once again to announce the winner of the JSP Prize for Literature. But as ever, before I do, I need to thank the jury. Five remarkable people who've had to judge the merits of many wonderful books. On behalf of JSP, I thank the jury for all they've done this year. Isn't it remarkable and truly wonderful that all of the books for this year's shortlist are translations? Translated works are clearly coming to the fore. But more importantly, the shortlist is an excellent representation of the diversity of Indian writing from the length and breadth of your wonderful country. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The winner of the JCB Prize for Literature 2022 is The Paradise of Food by Khalid Javid, translated from Urdu by Baran Farooqi. Many congratulations. Thank you, thank you, Lord Bamford. And congratulations to Khaled Javed Saab and Bara Faruqi and to Jagannath for the win. I'm going to now request Mr. Sunil Khurana and Mr. A.S. Paneer Selvan to please come up and present the JCB Prize for Literature 2022 to Khaled Javed Saab and Baran Farooqi. request Khaled Javed Saab to please say a few words. Actually, we look for joy and look for joy. And there are many corners where we want to be some joy. लेकिन शायद जो असल खुशी का मौका है, the real moment of joy, वो मैं आज पहली बार महसूस कर रहा हूँ। और इसके लिए JCB की पूरी टीम और जूरी का मैं तहे दिल से शुक्रगुजार हूँ। I am thankful। और सिर्फ thankful तो बहुत छोटा लोग हैं, because our most spiritual experiences are those which can never be prescribed into the scientific scientific argument or the scientific formula and when the language tries to express them, it takes a negative form. <laughs> so, it was a big deal. I didn't have any hope. I had a novel in 2014 in Urdu. After that, this novel has been written in this way. और जेसीबी के जरिए, जूरी के जरिए, और सबसे ज़्यादा बारह फारुकी के भी जरिए, क्योंकि उन्होंने एक 
एक दुनिया को दूसरी दुनिया में जाके ट्रांसपोर्ट किया है शी हैज़ ट्रांसपोर्टेड माई वर्ल्ड इन टू द अनदर वर्ल्ड तो जो कुछ उर्दू में लिखा हुआ था वो किस तरह इंग्लिश में आया और इंग्लिश के जरिए वो एक इंटरनेशनल लेबल के ऊपर जाके उसको वो कहना चाहिए कि रिकॉग्नीशन मिला तो मैं इन सब का बहुत ही तह दिल के साथ शुक्रगुजार हूँ और एक बार फिर बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया और ये कि शुक्रिया तो बहुत ही बहुत रस्मी सा लफ्ज़ है ये उससे बढ़ के कुछ है अगर मैं कभी लिखता अगर मुझे मालूम होता कि ऐसा कुछ होने जा रहा है तो मैं कुछ लिख के लाता चूँकि बेसिकली आई एम ए राइटर आई एम नॉट ए गुड स्पीकर बेसिकली आई एम ए वेरी बैड स्पीकर आई एम नॉट आर्टिकुलेट एट दिस टाइम और ख़ास तौर से जब आपके ऊपर इतना ज़्यादा जो आपका परसेप्शन है उसके ऊपर आपके हवास और दराक पर जब इतना बोझ हो यानी खुशियों का बोझ हो जिसको कि आप नहीं संभाल पा रहे हो लेकिन ये बिल्कुल असल मोमेंट है जो कि खुशी का असल मोमेंट शायद शायद यही है और आदमी इसको अपनी ज़िंदगी में एक या दो बारी इसको इसको पाता है बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया जी Please come up and say a few words. Um, good evening, everyone. I first would like to begin with thanking the JCB team, the JCB Literature Organization, everybody who's worked for it, and my most revered jury, and all those present here. Thank you so much for all the encouragement. Um, so I, it is uh, com it is compelling me uh, for me to talk about my father Shamsur Rahman Farooqi Sahab, who introduced me to Urdu. And uh, though we never studied Urdu in school, me and my sister were given rigorous lessons in Urdu and a bit of Persian and French as well. I mean, not to talk about English. Uh, so we were we were having lessons in Shakespeare and Saadi and Hafiz and Mir and Ghalib and Intezar Hussain and what have you. So uh, you know uh, we had discovered some years ago that Salman Rushdie in his novel The Enchantress of Florence had used a translation of a, of a share by Ghalib, uh, which my father had translated, and he has acknowledged it there. And the sheer goes like this in English because it's a Persian verse, and I have not been able to. I don't think I'll be able to render it properly. So it says that if there is a knower of tongues, fetch him here. If there is a knower of tongues, fetch him here. There is a stranger in the city, and he has many things to stay. So the stranger in the city. Uh, I don't know whether I'm uh, right to say that. You know, Urdu. has become a little bit of a stranger in today's world in india and the stranger in the city needs somebody to speak out for it to translate it and to reach you um, so uh, i um, i have no words to thank my father up there in heaven and i'm sure it's his blessings that have rained down on me <clears throat> and uh, as in one of his interviews to uh, for the punch which was taken by susmita srivastava he says that a master is one who is recognized as great in her own culture to jab tak apne culture mein aapko great nahi maan liya jayega तब तक कोई और कल्चर आपको कैसे ग्रेट मान लेगा तो सबसे पहला पैमाना तो यही है कि हम अपने ही अपने माशरे में अपने कल्चर में अपने सोशल मिलियो में अपने मास्टर्स को पहचाने सिर्फ इसलिए नहीं कि हमें किसी ने बता दिया कि होमर बहुत बड़ा शायर है या टेनिसन ने बहुत उम्दा लिखा है पर जब उनके कल्चर ने उनको यूलोजाइज किया और उनके बारे में बयान किया तो हमने भी उन्हें एम्ब्रेस किया तो आई थिंक द जे सी बी प्राइज़ फॉर लिटरेचर इज़ रियली डूइंग अूज ह्यूज सर्विस टू द लैंग्वेज ऑफ इंडिया बाई एनकरेजिंग ट्रांसलेशंस आई टेल यू आई मीन दे कैन बी नो दे कैन बी नो वर्ड्स टू डिस्क्राइब द ग्रेट टास्क दैट इज़ बींग अकम्पलिश्ड 
and I wish to congratulate all the shortlisted authors as well. And I'm really, I'm knocked over by their novels. And uh, it's my good fortune and probably my parents' blessings that have brought Khalid Sahab and me here today because Khalid Sahab has been a kind of an adopted son of my father's. And uh, so when he would visit, uh, he would always say, Ke main aapka bhai hu. Or I learned Farooq Sahib ki kya kahenge jootiyon ko seedha karke maine likhna. Lekin Farooq Sahib ne bhi unki writing ko sabse pehle pehchana. Or Shab Khun naam ka journal jo ke Urdu ka ya keh sakte Hindustan ka foremost journals mein se ek mana gaya hai jo 40 saal tak unhone chhapa. Usme Khalid Javed Sahib ki pehli kahani chhapi thi. Main thik keh rahi hoon? जी तो मैं एक दो बस छोटी सी और बातें कहूँगी तो उन्होंने तर्जुमे के बारे में कुछ लिखा है बहुत कुछ तो नहीं लिखा है लेकिन कुछ लिखा है और कुछ बातें अपने इंटरव्यूज में कही हैं and because I used to teach English literature at Jamia Millia Islamia in the Department of English a very short while ago I opted for voluntary retirement to go back to my hometown, Allahabad, and take care of my father's legacy, I mean, for whatever I'm worth. So um, uh, I remember I used to teach a paper on translation at the MA level. And uh, so I was always looking out for, uh, you know, striking and meaningful phrases about translation. And uh, Professor Harish Trivedi will bear me out that I am a great admirer of his writing about translation. And I used to teach an essay of his in which he talks about cannibalism, how transla a translator should not cannibalize a text. And, uh, you know, so I think my translations have benefited greatly from such masters as Professor Trivedi sitting here and many of uh, the other great translators that I have read. And uh, so I came across this um, quote from my father who says that, I mean, he's always said that translation is possible. Uh, let us not say that translation is impossible because, uh, you know, languages across the world must be having some deep down core which has some commonality somewhere. And let's, so we have to always believe that translations are possible. Translation is possible. So he says that old words can be re-narrated in new words. Old words can be re-narrated in new words. All that is needed is empathy, the power, and the ability to embrace and to feel the warmth of the embrace. So I think, you know, uh, I remember I was writing a paper on translation for a volume edited by Asaduddin Saab, uh, my professor at Jamia, uh, which has been published since by Rutledge. Um, so where I was writing, so I asked my father, just help me out a little, and so he gave me this example that let's not, when we translate older texts, you know, early texts, let's not make the translation feel musty and full of cobwebs. And uh, this is also in context of his own translation of his novel, Kai Chante Saryasma, which was published by Penguin in the year 2006, and later translated by him into, uh, into the Mirror of Beauty by Penguin. And uh, it's done, a, I mean, it, it, it's, I mean it, it has impressed, it has, it's part of world literature, we can say today. So when he, people would ask him, people would interview him, Ki aapne kaise us zamane ki, because it's a novel uh, which starts in um, the early 19th century and ends at uh, around 1857. And so aapne us zamane ki zaban aur vagera vagera kaise tarjuma kiya. So he said, I have not used any of these words in translation, which I felt that in the आज के दे, आज की डेट में अगर वो लोग जिंदा होते तो वो इस्तेमाल ना करते तो आ, मतलब हमें आ, अपने जो कैरेक्टर्स हैं उनको पास्ट के आ, उस कुएं में नहीं छोड़ देना होता है बल्कि हमें उनको पास्ट में उतर के और फिर हमें उनको दोबारा नरेट करना होता है आज की ज़मान में तो उनकी ये बात मुझे बिल्कुल देर को घर कर गई और मैं बार-बार उनका उनके इंटरव्यूज और उनके प्रेफरेंसेस पढ़ती हूँ ट्रांसलेशन के ऊपर और किस तरह से वो कहते हैं कि ट्रांसलेशन जो है उसको कभी शर्माना नहीं चाहिए ये कहने से कि वो ट्रांसलेशन है 
एंड उसको सीना ठोक के कहना चाहिए कि मैं ट्रांसलेटेड वर्क हूँ और सो हियर्स अ बिग बिग चीयर्स टू ऑल ट्रांसलेटर्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड थैंक यू सो मच एंड थैंक यू डियर मीता फॉर ऑल द एनकरेजमेंट एंड लव आई लेवर फॉर गेट दिस थैंक यू एवरी Thank you, Javed Sir, and and Baran. While storytelling is never ending, it is a gift that keeps giving. And I'm sure I stand before an audience that has benefited greatly from the generosity of books. They create spaces for us to withdraw to, to contemplate, to build personalities, to linger and laze. and provoke a change in our world view that continues to expand i can't wait to jump into the treasure trove of exciting books that will come to us next year a big thank you goes out to our partners who take our books to our readers books on the delhi metro the indian novels collective amazon india mint lounge scroll book bloggers book clubs and book stores that have stood by us and made sure that we connect with our readers i can't thank all the publishers enough for walking this path with us a special thank you goes out to the team at the jcb literature foundation they have actually been the backbone of the jcb prize for literature and without their hard work this prize cycle and this evening won't have been possible until next time we'll see you at the bookstores but before you head to the bookstores join us for dinner and cocktails thank you